Hey, Trail Kreitzer at Go Hunt. Uh, I'm privileged today to have Dirk Durham in the office. He was nice enough to come down and do some tutorials for us. Uh, we're gonna run through some elk calling strategies. Uh, and specifically, when I knew you were coming down, I had three like burning questions that I wanted to ask you. Uh, so we're just gonna jump into those. The first one is, what do you do about a bull that hangs up? So he comes in, he seems hot and bothered. He gets to that maybe 180 yard mark, but he just won't commit. So what do you do in that situation? And what's your strategy to deal with it? Okay guys, that's like a super common question. Like everybody's like, man, I get bulls that answer me every year and they come in, but then they hang up at this certain spot. And my first, my first question is like, okay, well, um, what was your setup? Well, I had a really good shooting lane here, and I had a really good shooting lane there, and I had a really good shooting lane over here, and one over here was a really good shooting lane. I could shoot, you know, like 60 yards. Mm -hmm. um, and there was not a lot of brush in the way. I'm like, cool. Okay, well, you're kind of setting yourself up for failure when you have a whole bunch of really, really good lanes that you can shoot a lot of long distances. Because the problem is, what happens is, those bulls will come in and the, they will stop at the first place that they can look and see where those calls are coming from, right? And, and elk has an incredible ability, I will say this, to pinpoint sound. So yeah. when they hear that call, they're coming in looking for an elk that made that sound and they have an unbelievable ability to pinpoint it. So what you're saying is that they're coming in, I mean, they're not just coming in, like they're coming in looking for an elk. They expect right. to see an elk. Yeah, they know where you are. It's almost like they have a GPS right. in their head. And if they don't see elk where they heard elk, all of a sudden they get suspicious. Mm -hmm. Be no different if you're walking outside the tavern and you hear, yoo-hoo, you hear a lady's voice and Nothing. I'm like, things are getting kind of suspicious around yeah, here, I'm right? Out of here. <laughs> you know? So um, what you want to do is set up or set your hunter up. Like say, you, let's say you're doing a team hunting. You got your shooter out front. You're the caller. You want your your shooter to be set up at the hang up spot, right? So that first place where that bull can come in and stop and look and see where the calls are coming from. That's where the shooter needs, needs to be very, very close to that spot. So it's more in picking your spot then? 100%. On, on what you're set up. Spot. Yep, yep. And I've kind of, uh, <clears throat> over the years, just automatically, as I'm walking through the forest, thinking to myself, man, if that bull was to come in over here, or he was gonna come through this way, where would I set up to capitalize on him being super close mm -hmm. within my range to where he's gonna come in to see those calls? So, and I do a lot of solo hunting, so. Sure. Um, I'll, I'll we're set getting, up. We're getting there. Okay. That's, <laughs> okay. So I feel like if I have like a, a okay shooting lane mm -hmm. for about 15, 20 yards and a really crappy one at like 10 yards and one, then, oh, he's going to have to be like three yards right over here to come in to shoot. This is good. So you almost prefer the thick stuff, right? Almost a little even, bit thicker. Yeah. So you wouldn't want to walk to like the edge of a meadow that's 80 yards and start no. calling and try to call that bull in because the bull's going to come into the edge of the opposite meadow. He's going to check it out. Be like, no cows, I'm out of here. And, right. and he's outside of your effective range, right? Right. Right. Okay. And it's a chess game. I mean, and you can't play checkers when the bull's playing chess. Right. right? So think of this. So as you're calling this bull and you're like, okay, you're... Or you're, you've heard the bull, now you're going towards him, and you're looking on your way to set up, and you get to the spot, it's like, oh man, this is beautiful. I can, I'm in this big dug fur patch of timber, and I can see 200 yards in it. Don't call. That's the worst place you can set up, because that bull can stand out there for 200 yards and look through this big, beautiful forest and not see a single elk, right? Mm -hmm. You need to like, okay, I'm not going to call here. I need to move up, move up, move up until you're thinking like, all right, I'm almost stepping on him oh, well, here's a little ridge, and he's on the backside of this little ridge. He's gonna he's, have to crest that. He's gonna have to crest that ridge to see me, okay? So what am I gonna do? I'm gonna put my collar on the ridge to where he can shoot onto the backside of the ridge if the bull comes up and just does this little thing where he peeks his head up to look over. Mm -hmm. But sometimes bulls, a lot of times, will come up and they'll kind of pace on top of the ridge. They want to kind of yep. walk back and forth, show their self off like, yeah, I'm the big stuff right here, guys. Look at me. You want your collar or your shooter to be set up right there where they can take that shot. So if you are calling with two guys, how far back do you want your collar? 
typically? Does it matter? Uh, it does. I, I like to be able to see my guy. I like to be okay. able to have us make eye contact, you know. Do you be, give hand signals? Hand signals. He may tell me, shut up. There's, you know, he can see things that are happening that I can't see. Mm -hmm. And vice versa, I may need to say, go, go, move up, move up. It's time to go. Or he may say, back up he want, mm -hmm. may want me to back up and, and you know act like I'm kind of leaving, leaving and kind of call as I'm walking away like I'm following a cow away uh, it, it's just those little things that will it'll pull, pull those bulls into into shot range for your shooter so you think that's the, the reason they hang up because they if the setup they can it's, it's come all, to a distance where they can see it's all set up Got they're it. gonna they're gonna hang up and stop when they can't they can't or when they can they can see, see where that elk should be. Right. So, and if you're hunting a lot of open country, maybe it's that chess game. It's like, okay, well, I can't call now. The bull's bugling, but I can't, I have no game. I have no play. It's way too open for a quarter mile, but I see where they're going. They're working their way up mm -hmm. this open country, up into this north face full of timber. Okay, that's where I'm gonna make my play. I'm gonna just let him get up there. Right, get, get let him there, go. Get settled, watch, listen, Follow along, you know, from a distance. Follow a safe distance away, and then just just wait. You have to stack stack the odds in your favor on this stuff. Right. Yeah, you got to think your way through it. Yeah, just, yeah, uh, yeah. You can't. You just can't. You yeah, know, blindly run out. And throw all your chips on the table sure. at once, and then like, oh, sure. that was the worst time to do that. Sure. Next question. Uh, we get asked a ton. I hunt a lot by myself. Have historically a lot on my own. Uh, we get asked all the time, "What are some strategies for calling elk solo?" Mm -hmm. So, what would you say to that? Um, there again, it's a kind of that uh, chess game or or whatever. So, there's a lot of trickery. Um, so, remember, we talked about the hang up spot where they're going to bull's going to come into view to where he can see where your call's from. So, if you're a solo caller, you're going to bugle as soon as you bugle you make all your calls there's going to be a hang up spot to where he can first come up and see where you're standing right mm -hmm. you have to kind of look at this stuff um so you make your calls you hear him it's like well he's starting to get a lot closer don't make any more calls now sneak up to where he's going to hang up mm -hmm. and sit there quietly and okay. just wait and wait for him just kind of just kind of go quiet on you because how many times do bulls do that yeah, all, times, all the time. They go quiet. Yeah, we're getting there too. That's They'll, the next one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They'll yeah. go quiet. So you want him to have to find <clears throat> you. And here he comes, looking, looking. He's looking down here where you made those calls. But as soon as you make another call, you have a brand new hang-up spot. Okay. So you have to remember that. So call, move up. Move up. To where you think he's going to potentially hang up, be able mm -hmm. to see where you made that call from, and then dummy up. Just don't right. make any more noise sit it out and wait right that's kind of your number one go-to for solo hunting definitely definitely okay. and here's another one a little trick a lot of times um let's say i don't have enough real estate there to do that it's mm -hmm. just like well i'm gonna make him think i'm a long ways away how do i do that well i'm gonna take my tube i'm gonna i'm gonna cup the end preferably with a gloved hand if you don't have gloves it's okay but i'm gonna i'm gonna bugle into my tube real lightly the opposite way <laughs> I'm gonna bugle the opposite way, very lightly with a with a covered tube, to where it sounds like I'm 100 yards over there. Right? Mm -hmm. We're trying to project that, and it works because a lot of times I've done that. I've even kind of bugled pretty full strength opposite ways and had bulls come past me, look at past, bull that's looking moving for, out. And, and their attention's up there on the hill. So it can it can really work well. Cool. Last. Uh, I get this question a lot. What do you do about a bull that just will bugle? He'll respond to you. you. You shot out a locator bugle. He bugles back. Maybe you get a couple more. You know, you've, you've got kind of a good beat on where you think he is or where he's headed. You make your move and you get down in there and you just cannot get him to respond again. He just dummies up and won't respond. What do you, what do, you that's, do? That's tough. That's a tough situation. Because yeah. you don't know. Did he leave? Yeah. Did he, is he standing over there just listening, staring? Mm -hmm. I mean, all the above. He just never know what they're doing over there. So a lot of times what I, what I do, we get to that place, he won't answer, he won't answer. I'll start having a little party of my own, right? <laughs> I'll start like, okay, well, you're not here. We're going to start this without you. So we're going to build this big image inside frenzy. this frenzy inside yeah. this elk's head. Mm -hmm. Like, man, what the heck's going on over there? 
So we're gonna start cow calling, you know, got the girls talking. We're gonna start bugling. Some FOMO, that's what they call that. F Fear of missing out. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we create FOMO yeah. with this bull, yeah. right? So we're gonna start slow mm -hmm. and we're gonna escalate, escalate to where at the very end, like this may take 20 minutes, okay? At the very end, I'm just ripping and running around in circles and acting like a crazy person, right? Make, mm -hmm. Throwing rocks and breaking branches and stomping. Um, and then if he hasn't vocalized at that point, I'm gonna move, okay? If I'm solo, I'm gonna move directly downwind, probably 50, 60 yards of where I was doing it, mm -hmm. okay? If I've got a buddy, I'm, we're both moving downwind and then we're gonna split up, right? Mm -hmm. Kind of like, okay, well, I think that bull was over there, I'm gonna set my buddy on that path over towards where that bull was gonna come from. I'm gonna still set up exactly downwind of right where I was at before mm -hmm. and just go quiet. Leave it sit for 30 minutes, Okay. 45 minutes, an hour. If you're like, I know he's here. That's you hard know, to do, you gotta exercise some patience. Patience is so, so hard, especially yeah. for, if you're like a guy that likes to call a lot, yeah. it's like the worst. Yeah. But uh, exercise some patience. Don't sit on a log and be like, oh, get comfortable here. No, stand there, arrow knocked, ready to go. Clean out a nice little spot where you're standing. Mm -hmm. Get rid of all the pine needles, all the pine cones, any little sticks to where you can stand quietly. And if you have to maneuver just a little bit, or, oh God, he's right there. You can like turn your body mm -hmm. without showing a bunch of movement. Um, and just be ready, keep your head on a swivel, you know, watching for movement, every little pop, every little thing. And the squirrels are probably gonna screw with you a lot yeah. too. But uh, that can work too, because a lot of times they're like, oh man. Especially in an area that's been hunted a lot, you know, where mm -hmm. they've been messed with a lot. They're like, yeah, I don't know about those bugles, but they'll come sneaking in, they wanna check it anyway. I'll come in downwind and yep. smell those guys too late. I'm so create a frenzy, see if you can get them going, and then exercise some patience. Hold tight, you know, stand your ground, give mm -hmm. it a half hour. Just make sure that he's, you know, act, actually not just hanging there. You're just kind of waiting to see, right? Right. And sometimes get get over there and like, why did he quit? Get on your map. Yeah. Get on your phone. Get on your map. You're like, oh, well, there's a there's a saddle right over here. He's probably on the back side of that saddle. You walk through the saddle, going crazy over there. You just couldn't hear him. Right. So that's a that's a big one too. There's been a lot of times in the past before all these mobile apps and stuff mm -hmm. where we we could like figure it out you're like yep. i've never been here before i don't know where he went shoot he's probably right over there the whole time yeah well good stuff those are my three burning questions you helped me out a lot i'm going to try to use some of those this coming year uh, i've been fortunate i've got some elk tags in my pocket i think you do too oh, yeah so it should be a good year uh if you guys have other questions you can drop them below we can take a stab at answering those or we can get in touch with Dirk over at Phelps and he can take a stab at them. Uh, yeah, leave us a comment if you got questions. Give us a like and subscribe. Um, we appreciate it. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Thanks for coming down. My pleasure.